Hello again, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the kind of common tools that you need in order to build things. This is a great time in the hobby to get your hands dirty and build some cool little gadgets or even some small radios. So let's talk about what you need to do that. First, a soldering station. Now, this is different than just a little pencil soldering iron that doesn't cost very much. The difference here is that with a soldering station, you can turn the temperature up higher. You can have it be a constant temperature, so it'll maintain whatever temperature you want. And uh, most importantly to me, they're replaceable tips. Normally a little pencil soldering iron will come with a fairly large chisel tip, which is fine if you're gonna be soldering PL259s or something like that. But for working with circuit boards, you really need a smaller tip. And uh, this tip that I've got here has a little bit of a hook on it too, which makes it easy to get into some difficult places. So a soldering station is a must have in my opinion. And even though it's gonna cost you a little bit more, uh, it will last a long, long time and it beats the heck out of a pencil soldering iron, trust me. Uh, while you're soldering, you're gonna to need to clean the tip of your soldering iron and this little brass pot here, that's what, that's what that's all about. So after you solder something, you've got some old solder, you just poke it in that pot and it cleans the tip. Of course, if you're gonna solder, you need solder. And here's some solder. Now, when I'm working with circuit boards, I prefer lead-based solder. You can get solder now that that's, uh, doesn't have lead in anymore, but the lead just flows better. It just works better. And as long as you take some precautions with the fumes, uh, and if, if you wash your hands after handling it before you eat, it's perfectly safe. Um, this is pretty small diameter stuff. You can buy larger, more traditional, uh, larger diameter solder if you're gonna solder something bigger like PL259s. But for working with circuit boards and other small, small things, this finer diameter solder is the way to go. Um, you're gonna make mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, you need, you need a way to fix those mistakes. So uh, one thing you can get to suck up the solder off a circuit board is this desoldering braid or soldering wick. And it's a little copper braid that you, you lay this on the board on top of the solder that you wanna to try to remove. And as you heat this braid, it heats the solder and sucks up the solder into the braid. Then you can just cut that off and, and you know, keep using a new piece every time. So that's really great to use. Um, something I use more often than that though is this solder sucker. What this does is it creates a vacuum that sucks the hot solder off the board. So there's a plunger here and when you push in the plunger, it has a button to release it and create a vacuum. So you'll put this on the circuit board, heat up the solder, and then when the solder starts flowing, you push this button, which creates a vacuum in here as the plunger gets drawn back up into the tube and it sucks the, the hot solder up and off the board. Now to get that off the, out of the thing, you just push the plunger in again and there's a little metal tip here that pushes the old solder out of the device. Solder sucker, it's your BFF. Uh, some other things, a digital multimeter. You'll use this to measure DC voltage, resistance, uh, so on. But, but what you're gonna use it for mostly is for measuring continuity. So there's a little mode you can put it in so that when the two probes you know, are electrically connected, you'll hear a beeping sound. And you'll use that quite a bit to make sure you don't create a short if you're doing cables or something like that. For holding the components you're working on, you've got to have some kind of third hand. You know, when you're soldering, you've got your solder in one hand, you've got the starting iron in the other, and you're, you know, doing this. So you need something, a third hand to hold things with. This is the least expensive thing you can buy. This is typically called a third hand, and it's adjustable. It's got a couple of alligator clips. Uh, it'll certainly work uh, in a pinch, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but if you're doing anything serious, this Panavice Junior is the way to go in my opinion. I think it's about 80 bucks, um, but it's fantastic and you'll use it forever. Uh, it's got a fairly heavy base. You can certainly put screws through your desk and screw it down if you want to, but you don't need to because the base is heavy enough that you don't have to do that. Uh, you can release this little ball joint. These jaws can be, you know, 
put it in any direction you want and then you just unscrew the the jaws or screw them back into whatever size you want. There's some grooves in here to hold circuit boards or you know whatever you're trying to solder. Now you don't have to have one of these but when I was working on the Elecraft KX1 a while back the circuit boards were a little bigger than what I could handle with this and so I I got this. This is kind of the father of this and it's complete overkill except if you're working with a circuit board that won't fit in this and then you know it's it's a lifesaver. So uh, I recommend this if you're working with something bigger. It's got the same kind of principle. It's got a ball joint that you can you know, completely adjust. Um, but you don't need this unless you're working with bigger circuit boards, in which case you can't do without it. All right, some things on the back row here. Utility knife, that razor blade edge, really handy for uh, trimming insulation off of some wires and uh, wire, wire strippers can do the same thing. And the wire stripper uh, has a little sharp jaw here for, for cutting wires. And the tip of it has a little like wire plier kind of jaws if you want to use it for that. So that's a really handy thing to have. Of course, you know, regular wire pliers are handy to have, as are needle nose pliers. Uh, there's a lot of times when you'll need that for pulling something through a board or uh, shaping a lead or, or something. So it's hard to do without that. This is impossible to do without. These are side cutters. They're called side cutters because the surface that actually cuts things is on the side of the jaws, which allows you to take a component lead, like say you've just soldered in a resistor, and where you soldered it, you can put this right up next to the edge of the board and clip that lead uh, off the board. So you need something that cuts flush with the board, and these side cutters are what you need for that. So it's better to go ahead and get a, a nicer pair of these uh, that'll last a long time and are sharp and, and work well than just the cheapest thing you can find. Forceps can come in handy. Uh, you can use this for clamping things, for as a heat sink, for grabbing a screw or something that you've lost down in the chassis. Uh, there's just a lot of uses for forceps. Of course, regular household scissors, a little screwdriver kit with Phillips and um, straight, you know, flat blade screwdrivers. All right, so the last thing on the table is this Hacko fume extractor. Now, uh, as I said earlier, the solder has lead in it, and you don't want to breathe that stuff. The, the flux, the rosin, you know, stuff, everything, the, the, all those fumes are bad for you. And if you breathe them, at the very least, you're going to get a sore throat. And it's going to be uncomfortable for a day or two. Um, but over the long term, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a physician. I don't know what the long term impacts are, but it's got to be bad, right? So I bought this fume extractor. And the principle of this is there's a charcoal filter under here. And when you put this thing on your desk, no air can get in to the filter through here. The air is drawn into these vents right here. Um, and so air comes in, including the fumes that your stuff you're soldering, goes up through the charcoal filter and out into the room. So in principle, it's a good thing. The problem with it is that it's not practical because when you're soldering, it's just hard to be in a situation where the thing that you're soldering can be put right up here next to the vent. And if it's not right up next to the vent, the, it's not going to be drawn away from you. So you, you have to solder right next to it. And um, there are just many times when you're working with a circuit board or something that, you know, you can't get closer than about that to it. And that's too far. So it was kind of a waste of money. My heart was in the right place. But it just doesn't work that great unless you can get close to it, and most of the time you can't. So what I do, you can't see it, but off camera I've got a floor fan. It's just a round fan sitting on a, a base. And I'll turn that on to the lowest setting and just have it blow air across the desk here. So as I'm soldering, the fumes are being blown away from me, uh, but it's not blowing so hard that it blows things off the desk. Uh, I'm in a pretty good sized room here 
and by just blowing the fumes away from me it dilutes it enough where it's not a problem if i was going to be sitting here eight hours a day soldering things i'd probably want something more serious like some kind of fume extractor or maybe that even vents outside but just opening a window having a fan blowing across your desk is enough but you definitely need to you need to take my advice and do something because you, you don't want to just breathe the fumes of this stuff uh, directly. It's not good. Hey guys, I realized when I was editing the video that I forgot to tell you that you really need to get a lighted magnifying lamp. This is absolutely critical for soldering. Uh, if you're trying to solder something small, you just got to have this. So uh, go ahead and get one. But this is the kind of the basic stuff. This is the stuff that you'll use 90% of the time. And, uh, I would guess that probably everything on this table, except for this guy, would probably cost you, I don't know, $250 or something like that, and it'll last forever. So uh, as, I, as I said, this is a great time to be building things, and uh, I'm going to make some more videos that show you some little gadgets that I've built uh, that you can build. So I'm going to stop here, and uh, if you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff, uh, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll get back to you quickly. So I suppose that's it. Thanks for watching.